Coming up on NHL tonight. Sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the thunderbug. Cheaters never prosper. Tampa Bay gives it their all. Can Washington cap off another road win in this series? All Poes lead to Vancouver. Blues and Canucks play game five, and when push comes to shove, St. Louis has the Blues. Three overtimes and a baby. Driver eight, take a break. And Alexa Recchi, take a break too. I gotta get home. I gotta have a child in the morning. So. <laughs> well, my wife's gonna have a child, and great thing in life, I'm looking forward to it. Believe NHL tonight begins right here, right now. Night 10 of the Stanley Cup playoffs alongside Chicken Parm, Ray Ferraro, and Barry Melrose. I am John Butchergast. How are you, Barry? Super, John. Ray? Couldn't be better. All right, let's get right to it. We begin with the Caps and the Lightning series tied at two, and thus far the series has two constants. The road team has won all the games, and the team that has scored first has won all the games. Good news for Caps fans in Tampa Bay for Game 5. Score first. It's a lock. Game 5 time from Tampa Bay, and here are all the components. Winner of Game 5 in series tied at 2. Go on to win 80% of the time. Dan Boyle tries to clear right to Sergei Berzin, but Havi is there. Later second, Vincent the Calvier to forecheck, and only the goalie follows through on the clear round, Ray, and they say hi, Sticky. Not only is this a bad call, it shouldn't be four minutes either. Le Cavalier gets cut, but he's reaching for the puck. Kolzik doesn't see him. He's got to be able to shoot the puck. Ensuing power play because it was more than just two minutes. Bolt score. one nothing. Barry. Cardinal sin right here. Brendan Witt killing a penalty. Complete possession. He does not wire it out. It's blocked by Boyle. That always comes back to haunt you, and it ends up on Sam uh, Louis stick, and then possible stick, and then in the net. And he had the whole wall to work with there. Didn't quite see it. Second period, one nothing. Ben Clymer behind the net. Uh, Funky cold Kubina, Ray. Yeah, nobody uh, picks up Kubina on the way in. He's got Kolzig beat, but he rifles it over top of the net. Later, Yager knocks down Kubina. Gets the puck back. Girls and how in the wide world of sports did he see Michael Nylander, Barry? I don't think he saw Michael Nylander. It's just a field. Probably got a hauler from the front of the net and put it right on the tape. Pretty good uh, player, that Yager. Oh, never looked up. Now in the third, 1-1. One, one. St. Louis steals from Bonda. Right there. Looks for Modine. Has him. Fire save. Richards. How about now? Two saves there for Oli the goalie later in the third. So, two great passes. LeCavier somehow finds Netscash right there, right on his tape. Netscash waits, 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 sees St. Louis' wee little stick up in the air, Ray, and finds him for the goal. Well, St. Louis goes to the net. Great pass by LeCavier, as you mentioned. Netscash looks it at, uh, across the front of the net, finds St. Louis. Everybody's looking at the puck. Nobody picks up Marty. Last 60 seconds, mayhem. Bears and almost beats Happy Bullen. Doesn't. That's a happy bullet from the regular season right there. He hasn't been doing that in the playoffs that much. That's right. Player of the month in March in the NHL. First game in series won by the home team. The team that has scored first has won all five games in this series. And again, don't forget, there were 344 best of seven playoff series prior to this year. Of those series tied at two, the winner of game five has won 80% of the time. The Bolts need one more win to claim their first playoff series victory in franchise history. And you can thank Marty. We have to make sure we don't lose the momentum and uh, come out hard in the third. And I thought we sustained some pretty good pressure on them in the third. We had a lot of good chances. And uh, Habby was strong when they got their chances. And uh, everybody elevate their game again tonight. And that's the way we got to approach every game. Washington came back and, and again ties the game up. And Marty's, Marty, Stan, and Vinny make a great play in the winning goal. I mean, the game could have gone either way. Uh, it was who was going to make the next big play both defensively and offensively, and uh, we were very fortunate uh, to get it done. But I thought we played well, well enough to win the game. We just need to convert on a few chances, and like I said, uh, be a little uh, smarter with the puck and not give them opportunities, but it didn't work out. Bruce Cassie said the officials misread the rule on that only the goalie high sticky. Well, MSL now has four goals and four assists in the opening round. Since 1990, only two men have recorded more points in their first ever playoff series. They are Mark Recchi in 91 and Paul Correa, cha-cha-cha, in 97. Barry had just four goals in 69 games as a flame. Of course, this year, 33, and an all-star little guy, 
those guys aren't supposed to be big time playoff performers. Well, again, it's not the size of the fight and the dog. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just this guy has got so much bravery. You see his face; it's cut wide open. He goes into traffic. He's fast, very tough to catch if you're a big lumbering defenseman. And he scored those eight points basically in three games. So that shows how well he's playing. What does he add to this team? Just about everything. I think he single-handedly turned this series around. Right here, you see the speed of him. Right early in the game, turns it right around. Baxter's watching defenseman up. You want to see vision? Great pass to Prosper coming late out of the corner. That's a power play goal we talked about. What else does he add to this team? A little bit of anticipation. Steals the puck right there. Nice backhand saucer pass to Modine. That one didn't go in. Richardson also had a chance at it. Neither one scored. When they need a goal, who has been scoring all those goals? Yeah, Netscash made a great play, but it was San Luis who got away from Zubris on that play. San Luis is doing everything for this team. La Cavalier is their star. Happy Bull and maybe their most valuable player during the regular season. But without a doubt right now, the reason they're up one go uh, game is Martin San Luis. They should name a city after this guy. <laughs> People talk about the economic situation in the NHL, but look at Calgary. It's not money. That was money. That was they bad traded decision. Jaguar bad and they didn't re-sign St. Louis, two of the best playoff performers. I can't right believe now. they make the playoffs every year. <laughs> oh, they don't. Unbelievable. You know, a captain's job is to be an example, an example of commitment, courage, and confidence. On the ice, Vancouver captain Marcus Nazlin had an MVP year during the regular season. Off the ice, his quotes haven't quite instilled his team with confidence. After failing to win the Northwest Division on the last day of the regular season, Nazlin said his Canucks quote choked. Now with his team down 3-1, Nazlin, who might have opted for a fire and brimstone guarantee type speech, opted for the cautious approach. I don't get a feeling that anyone's given up. And uh, we know it's a tough test to come back from 3-1, no doubt about it. But uh, with a win here, we go back and, and get another shot at beating them in St. Louis, which I, I think we, we can do. And then uh, hopefully finish it off here again. So um, I see the possibilities. Fired up, Barry? I'm really charged. I, that got me going. <laughs> Bray? Uh, he's Ray, just a nice I guy. I, I had to wake him up. He's a very nice man. <laughs> Brent Sopel. What happened here, Ray? Uh, the shaggy DA throws it in <laughs> from the point here. Worst hairdo in hockey. Not that I have any hair. The bald guys are always ripping the guys with hair. <laughs> that could be a mullet, Barry. I guess you know <laughs> it is a mullet. Oh, look at Sean Podine almost tied up, Barry. He goes to the far post like he's been taught since he's a kid. Nash makes a nice play. Nash is very effective, but Kucha is excellent, Ray. Ray, Eric Boganicki, chances in front. Yeah, Bogey has had a great year this year. He came out of nowhere. He's wide open. He can't get a stick on it. His Owen stops him here. Here he's lying down close to the ice, and Kluche makes a nice pad save. And that was a penalty as he was tripped up. Meanwhile, Dan Kluche gives it up, and Tyson Nash ties the game at one. Ten moments later, Matt Cook. No, Matt Cook, yes, the Bertuzzi. Man, those hands are so fast. Barry, he's enormous and quick. And he uses his body to shield the puck. It's very hard to go through. A guy's 250 pounds. See how he uses it on defenseman right there? Makes a great play. He is really, really talented. It's amazing, a man that big, that good. All right, so the big line who came, the big line who came in with not very much production, starting to get off to a good start, and they're not done. First Bertuzzi, now Morrison. His first of the series. That was Bertuzzi's first of the series. 3-1 Vancouver, but what about the captain? Bertuzzi has one. Morrison has one, and Nazan has one. Second of the playoffs, Barry, 4-1, Van. Very similar to what Ottawa does in their power play. Nazan has the puck there. Now Osgood's got to respect the pass. He cheats a little bit, opens up his legs, and right off the right foot. All right, power play Vancouver, but we're going the other way in a 4-1 game. Corey Stillman, holy mackerel, look at all those deeks, and how doesn't this go in, Ray? No idea. Stillman was the best forward for St. Louis tonight. He makes about five deeks. He thinks he's got it there. He tries to shove Kluche into the net. The puck stays out. Kluche with a big save. Stillman would score later to make it 4-2, and then Ruchinski with an empty net makes it 4-3. We, we're not done yet. Under a minute to go, but then seven seconds later, Sammy Sallow. Off the glove of Osgood. Bertuzzi, Morrison, Nasland. Three goals. After combining for just one the first four games of the series, Morrison just his second playoff goal in 25 playoff games. Doug Wade, another good game, two helpers. Game six, Sunday in St. Louis, right here on ESPN2, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. Okay, so Ray, uh, the Blues had a chance to, to wrap this thing up in Vancouver. Instead, they go back to St. Louis. What do you see in this one? Well, any way that Vancouver's going to get back in the series is going to be on the backs of their big line. Todd Bertuzzi, Marcus Naslin, and Brendan Morrison. Coming into the game tonight, they had a goal and three assists. That's it. They need, they need more out of these guys. You saw the Bertuzzi goal. He takes it to the front of the net. He uses his body. Played over 20 minutes today. Mark Crawford wanted him on the ice as much as possible. 
You see Brendan Morrison go to the front of the net. He has not been going to the front of the net. He, he's looked tired early in the series. He had a very nice game today. And Naslin, who you guys don't like his speech, he's no Vince Lombardi, but he can shoot the puck, <laughs> puts it through the five hole here. Vancouver took advantage of a St. Louis team that, that had some problems with the flu. They lost Havanoff early, who played just 30 seconds. Pronger looked not anywhere near at full strength, and McGinnis was, was out of the lineup with a shoulder injury. The big line took advantage of, of St. Louis being undermanned. They did a very good job. Now they got to do it again in St. Louis. And you wonder if that flu will become an issue as we go back to St. Louis. What if more guys get sick? They'll be doing, uh, the doctors will be working overtime. Don't worry. Break out the St. Joseph's aspirin, please. More to come here on the NHL tonight. We focus on some of the top blue liners in these Stanley Cup playoffs. We honor the offensive defenseman and defensive defenseman. And Barry and Ray break down the toy like a Toyga Flyer Maple Leaf series. All that and more when NHL Tonight continues. NHL Tonight, brought to you by La Bat Blue, imported from Canada. Look up, see blue. The Saab 9.3 Convertible. So many adjectives have never been so affordable. Lease a Saab 9.3 Convertible as low as $399 a month for 48 months. For details, see your Saab dealer. Hello? Hey, how you doing? You want to grab some dinner? Oh, it's you. You don't call for ages, and I'm just supposed to say, hi, great, dinner, fine. No, yeah, but... But I but nothing. Could you hibernate or something? Whoa. Well, uh, hey, let's go around. Shh. Yeah. Look up, see blue. Look back blue. You must be so hungry. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. Meet the new guy. Hey. Hi, I'm Bob Holtkamp. Hey, Hi. help yourself to some snacks. Speaking of which, you know what would taste good about now? Yeah, a big, hot, and juicy cheeseburger. With everything. I can almost taste it. Telling me, if there are a place to get a hamburger that good this late, I'd not only drive, I'd buy. Really? Wendy's classic hamburgers are made fresh, so they're always hot and juicy, so you can eat great even late. You must be the new guy. Yeah, thanks. Wendy's, it's better here. The intensity picks up. Now. The game changes. Now. Champions rise up. Now. The NBA playoffs on ESPN. Season long on ESPN and ESPN2. Access the Stanley Cup playoffs. Stars versus Oilers Game 6. Will you be watching? Top Blue Liners. Brought to you by Labat Blue. Imported from Canada. Look up, see blue. 39-year-old Scott Stevens has a ge genetic makeup like few others, still going strong. Stevens was on the ice for nearly all of Joe Thornton's shifts as the Devils beat the Bruins in five. He had two points and was a plus five. But what does Barrett Jackman do well? Uh, Ray, he's 17 years younger. Yeah, he is 17 years younger. He's very physical like Stevens. He moves the puck very well, underrated skater. Everybody knows how tough he is. He's been in Bertuzzi's kitchen all series. Now to the offensive ilk. Sergei Zuboff is playing 27 minutes a game in the Star Oilers series and has four goals and four assists. Two of his goals have come on the power play. Dallas power plays at 18%. And Toronto's Thomas Caberlieberry. Well, he's been joining the rush very well. Toronto's having trouble creating offense. When you come back that, you let your defenseman come with your forwards. Big overtime goal right there against Philadelphia. Mark Recchi will never forget April of 2003. On Wednesday, he scored a triple overtime goal to beat the Toronto Maple Leafs. On Thursday, Recchi's wife Alexa gave birth to a seven pound, three ounce baby boy at Pennsylvania Hospital. He is the couple's third child. Obviously talk to my wife and make sure she's doing okay. And, and uh, you know, we talked about, well, I hope it doesn't go to overtime. She's <laughs> 
And sure enough, boom, <laughs> three of them. Dangerous looking rush for Philadelphia, and that's stopped by Matt Moore. She turned it off about 10 minutes before I scored. She said she couldn't take it anymore. She was too nervous, so uh, <laughs> she turned it off. She said she turned it back on to watch the, uh, to see what was happening, and, and we, were, we had won the game. She didn't know I scored, though. Uh, they were interviewing, uh, actually she said they were interviewing JR, so she thought he scored the goal. And Hansis gets it in to Ricky. Ricky gets set, the shot scores! Ricky gets the winning goal here! I gotta get home. I gotta have a child in the morning, so. We landed just after three. Uh, I got to the house 20 to four. Um, you know, got ready for bed, and, and uh, I probably fell asleep about 4.30ish, somewhere around there, and, and uh, actually I was still, you know, I was thinking, well, I'm not going to get much. I was almost not even worth it. And I got up at 5.30, and we had to be at the hospital between uh, 6 and 6.15. So, so And then uh, the baby was born at 8.15. There's nothing more important than your family and, and having a child. I mean, uh, it's, it's the most remarkable feeling, and, um, you know, especially when it comes out. I mean, we knew it was a boy, but it was, it was still, um, you know, when it comes out, it's just it's, it's awesome. You know? Austin Recchi is the third child for Mark and Alexa. Now to the series, Barry, Leafs and Flyers. And now the Flyers have a tactic that right now they are going to, because at times they have problems scoring goals. Well, when you're playing against, obviously, the guy who's carrying the series, and that's Eddie Belfort, you've got to combat him and do things to bother him. And the Flyers really, really taken to going to the net. He's been bumped more than any of their defensemen. Watch right here. He's always got men in front of him, guys, big guys, too. John LeClaire. There's 230 pounds. The defensemen are having a lot of trouble moving those big Philadelphia forwards. Thus, Eddie Belfort's got a lot of contact. With McClary, you've got guys like Hamzus is a big man. Mm -hmm. You've got Primo who's been in, and, uh, in front of the net all series long, winning physical battles. Uh, you've got other big forwards that are going to the net. Rolnick is in his face a lot. You see the traffic in front right here. Belfort does not get to see many pucks clean. Uh, when he's seeing an odd man rush, guys are coming at him as a group, and he always knows if he gives up a rebound, there's going to be a goal scored. Uh, and that's what they got to do. He is the key to the series. I feel they've been outplayed very, very badly. He's the reason it's uh, going into get into Series 5, and he must continue to do that. So, Ray, uh, that's what I think about Eddie Belfort. What do you see in this series? Well, if Toronto's going to get back in, you're right. Belfort's been the key, and they've got to clear some room for him. I've also, they brought in Owen Nolan at the trading deadline, and he's got to do something. Nolan, Nolan has not been physical. He's not got to the front of the net. And without him in the lineup, or him being effective in the lineup, they, they really don't have much chance. He's gotten just a couple of chances on goal. I haven't liked the way that he's not been physical. He's had some health problems in the past. I don't know if that's a factor or not. Phil Housley was brought over to bolster the defense, as Barry mentioned, because the Flyers are so big and strong. They haven't been able to use Housley since game two. Here you see him getting beat by Jeremy Roenick and going to the front of the net. Also a big help would be to get Alexander McGillney back in the lineup. He takes a stick from Roenick right in the chops. He missed uh, game four with concussion-like symptoms. They're not really going so far as to say it's a concussion because he would have to pass baseline tests that would, would eliminate any lingering problems and would make him eligible to play. They need him back in the lineup. They need a contribution from, uh, from Nolan as well. And as you mentioned, Eddie Belfer's got to be the best player. Series tied at two. You know how important game fives are. Again, the winner of game five is going to win 80% of the time. Flyers leaves on Saturday. After a bumpy start, the Stars are soaring. One more win. They move on and play the Muddy Ducks. Ray and Barry tell us why. They're up three games to two. But first, New Jersey Scott Stevens has appeared in more regular season games won by his team than any player in NHL history. We want to know who has appeared in the most winning playoff games. Now, this is a good, solid question any hardcore hockey fan should know. Does Barry and Ray know? Find out next. a new level of performance from Acura, the all-new TSX. K-Swiss, let's go. Let's go. Uh, part three. Got love for my shoes, K-Swiss. K-Swiss is back with a brand new invention and the SP249 to the description. Silver stripe times five, one of a kind, an athletic design for the times that'll blow your mind. Sporty style is on point, it won't miss. Uh. Got love for my shoes, K-Swiss. Got love for my shoes, K-Swiss. 
Third and long once again for the Texans. Carr brings the offense to the line. The Cowboys front four has been all over the rookie. What does your team need? The NFL Draft. Boomer, Mel Kuyper Jr. and the crew bring you 17 hours, 32 teams, all 262 picks because every round counts. The 2003 NFL Draft presented by Coors Light. Next Saturday and Sunday, only on ESPN. I tell you, people love digital cable for the strangest reasons. Like I'm showing this lady all the interactive features, and I get to the blackjack, she goes nuts. Head, head, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, come on, come on, come on. Yeah! Nuts. <laughs> Insight Digital Cable has lots of interactive features. Everyone's got their favorite. What's your insight? Insight Media Advertising has an immediate opening for a full-time shooter editor in our Lafayette, Indiana office. Responsibilities include, but are not limited to, providing production support for on-site and studio commercials. Basic videography and non-linear editing skills are required. Knowledge of current production trends and related computer software is helpful. Insight Media Advertising offers competitive salary and excellent benefits. No phone calls. Please apply to Insight Media Advertising, Anderson, Indiana. All right, boys, simple question. Who has appeared in the most winning playoff games in history? I think it's Glenn Anderson. That's who I got written down here, Glenn Anderson. Barry, how could you go against your man? Patty Waugh. Glenn Anderson grabbed my attention first. Lowe and Messier are next at uh, 151. Well, tomorrow night, ESPN 2, the Dallas Stars look to close out the Edmonton Oilers. Stars up three games to two. The Stars power play humming an 18% rate in this series. The Oilers got to stay out of the box. Yeah, at, at, at the skill level that the Dallas Stars have, Edmonton can't be giving them any extra chances. Dallas had 19 power plays in game two, which is just absurd. <laughs> they get into game five, they have to have a, a solid start here. Ethan Morrill cross-checks Scotty Young in the mouth for no real apparent reason with the score one nothing. He gives them another power play chance. Here's Scott Ferguson trips, uh, trips one of the Dallas Stars off the faceoff. He goes to the box. Just 20 seconds later, here's Medano to Zuboff. It's in the net, two nothing. Edmonton has enough problems in this series keeping up to Dallas and all of their talented guys. They cannot give them extra chances on the power play. They also can't make things much as, as easy as they have for the Dallas Stars. Exactly. Things came way too easy for that skilled team the Dallas Stars have. They don't need any help, and penalties are one of them. But the, when the goals that were scored, the puck was going east to west, side to side. That should not happen with a good defensive team. Now watch right here. One side of the rink to the other side of the rink and back. That's bad defense, folks, whether you're killing a penalty or whether it's five on five. There's another slash. The puck goes from one side to the other. Very tough for a goaltender to follow the puck and make the save. Right here, it is a goaltender's fault. Casello kicked out a terrible rebound, but again, the puck went side to side, 100 feet. Young here, off the shot. He's got to kick that thing back in front of him or into the corner. So that's two easy goals for the great Dallas Stars team. Keep the puck in the, in the center. Make them work for the uh, goals around, along the boards or in front of the net. But don't let Madonna have one-timers from the side. It's going to be in the net all night long. Oilers 1 for 20 on the power play. Game 6, ESPN. 8 o'clock Saturday night. While the hockey world and especially hockey town are still in a state of shock, it's not yet Easter and the Wings will be home watching their kids look for eggs instead of looking for another Stanley Cup. The defending cup champs with some final thoughts on their season-ending sweep at the hands of the Mighty Ducks. I was thinking like uh, if we could uh, win one game so uh, the momentum would turn around and uh, uh, I would say without talent, experience and the uh, skill level so I think we should we should be able to uh, beat that team. You're not used to having uh, this much time off, so uh, you almost feel guilty uh, about trying to go out and do anything as far as a vacation or, or whatever that may be. But, uh, uh, you know, you don't want to watch any of these other games, but you know you're going to hear about things, and uh, it's going to be uh, difficult to watch someone else lift the cup. But, um, you know, that should be motivation enough right there for us uh, when we come back here next, uh, next year. How popular are the Wings in Detroit during the overtime against the Ducks? 41% of the televisions turned on in the metro Detroit area were watching the Wings and Anaheim. More to come here on the NHL tonight. Tonight's three is next, and we celebrate playoff overtime classics. ESPN HD.
sponsored by Philips and Best Buy. Somewhere between exits 45 and 50, an order was canceled. Somewhere between a hose and a radiator, there was trouble. Somewhere between noon and 2.30, there was a change of plans. And somewhere between where you are and where you're going, there's a Super 8. See you along the way. Wow. You're so lucky. I know. I never knew I could feel so complete. I want to feel complete. Yeah. May I? Get the internet you've been expecting. Move to Earthlink. Our exclusive online tools get rid of virtually all interruptions and hassles. So no matter how you want to connect, we not only make it happen, we make it better. Why wait? Move to Earthlink. Call 1-800-EARTHLINK or go to earthlink.net for special savings. glasses for a toast. Champagne? <laughs> Good move. A quality beer drinker doesn't compromise a Samuel Adams lager. Always a good decision. the Stanley Cup playoffs. Scores! 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 Oh, what a stop! Stars versus Oilers Game 6. Will you be watching? All right, tonight's three salutes overtime classics. April 18th, 1987, 16 years ago, Friday, Pat LaFontaine beats the Caps. Yeah, but Gordy Deneen makes the play. He does, and he shoots it through Dale Henry. We used to call him Loaf of Breadhead. <laughs> Nine years later, the Cavs victimized once more Peter Nedved. Steve Levy was doing that game. What a surprise. That starts the Steve Levy legend of always doing that long overtime games. And just two years ago, Keith Primo beats the Tugger. You know what? That was his last goal he's ever scored in the playoffs. And that was a Steve Levy game, too. Third longest overtime game ever. So again, the Loaf of Breadhead. Loaf of bread head. He had a large like Saskatoon. Yes, right? that's right. He had a he had a pretty big head to start with, but he had really high hair. Okay. And um, loaf of bread head, wonder bread head was what we used to call him All when right. he couldn't hear. Uh, back here with Ray Ferraro and noted Jimmy Durante enthusiast Barry Melrose. <laughs> Very underrated comment. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about uh, Minnesota and Colorado. Did not touch on them during the show. Uh, they lose game one yep. because of Dwayne Rollison, but they, they even dominated much of that game. Um, what did Colorado do in the next? few games uh, to change to turn things around if, if anything they became Colorado yeah. uh, and again you know they they're all their focus on uh, defensively is to stop the Forsberg line the best line during the regular season and, and they're doing an okay job on that but all of a sudden Joe Sackey gets hot that's why they are a team that's going to maybe win the Stanley Cup they got so much depth uh, if the forwards don't score then Blake jumps in or Morris jumps in or foot jumps in for a big goal to freeze even uh, they just got so many weapons and I think they just wore Minnesota down finally and I really think Ray the only way Minnesota is going to win this game I think one of the goals goaltenders, whoever they use, has to steal it from Minnesota and give that team some life again. Oh, I agree. Jacques Lemaire said that, you know, we have to play almost a perfect game. We have to have a great effort from everybody if we're going to even compete in this series. If we don't get a great effort from everyone, we're going to have a tough time. I, I think what, you've, what we're starting to see in this series is the Minnesota Wild had a terrific season. They play their system as well as anybody else. They got everything they can out of each and every player through the regular season. You get to the playoffs where the game moves up a notch, and they just can't move their game up a notch right now to compete with a team like Colorado. They're moving in the right direction. They're a, they're a good hockey team. Unless the goalie steals the game, I don't see any way that they can get back into this series. 
certainly to win three games in a row. But you feel Colorado does have enough to go all the way. Do you I, feel that way? I like Colorado right now. I, I like uh, the way they're playing. I like the depth of this team. I think they're a better team this year than they were last year uh, with the addition of Morris. I'm a big believer in defensemen. I don't think you can have enough great defensemen. They play more minutes. They play more key minutes than forwards. I think that's why they're a better team. Uh, Sackey looks rejuvenated. Uh, the Forsberg line is dominant. So uh, I just think this is a team again. I, I think so too. I think they're a team that can compete. You know what? Patty looks like Patty Waugh looks like he's got it going again. All right. Thanks so much. Of course, we're back every night. Martin St. Louis, what a wonderful playoff you're having as we say goodbye. More Marty.